Yeah, hey now, PASW staff, clients, and friends joining us. Uh, welcome to Wednesday's class. We're halfway through the week, and so far, so far, so good. Um, we looked at Marnie Nixon, the very um, infamous or not famous uh, singer who dubbed all of those wonderful um, uh, actresses who thought they could sing. No, that's a mean way of putting it, but uh, yeah, she was definitely um, the go-to uh you know, woman to sing all of those songs. So that was interesting. Marnie Nixon, an unsung hero or sung hero. And then we looked at your film's going assignment, Back to the Future, uh, which is looking good so far. So we'll see the results for Friday. Just, you know, I like to do a little recap. Um, we're going to tango it up a little bit today. I have my tango shirt on, whatever that means. But, uh, you know, it's, 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 we're going to get a little, um, we're going to, um, we're going to uh, try not to dance too much during this class because it's going to be very cool um, to uh, talk about somebody who invented kind of a new tango style and somebody who's uh, Italian but grew up in Argentina. And um, let's get real sexy with uh, Astor Piazzolla. <laughs> Piazzolla is uh, born in 1921, and um, he's a composer, but also a, a brilliant accordion uh, bandonian. Um, uh, bandonian is a kind of accordion with a different sound. They don't they don't have register switches, but the uh, the timbre of the instruments um, constantly changing, so you have more more control over what kind of sound and color and timbre you get out of it. So, bandonian. I might say accordion throughout the class, but just because it's a little bit easier. But um, and a brilliant composer and arranger, and he revolutionized the tango. I mean, tango has been going on for a long time, but this is—he's revolutionizing it in the mid middle of the 20th century. Um, we're gonna get real groovy and talk about his life and just really have fun listening to some of his his beautiful mute tango music that he developed. That. Um, that, that, I don't know. I know I say the word elevated a lot, but it's good because we, we think, you know, we live life like this and we're always trying to go to the next step. And we look at people that go to the next step just to better ourselves, better our emotional psyche, you know, just try to learn more every day. We try to, we grow more every day. So I do say elevate in a way that's, um, denotes, you know, higher thinking in a way of, of adjusting and going to the next level because we all we all want to grow so that's why I guess I mean that so he took kind of this this tango form that was great but he um, yeah, I'm gonna say it again elevated it uh, by incorporating elements of jazz and classical music so um, his early life I mean when he's eight years old his father brought him his first bandonian um, and he had a very famous teacher, or very important teacher, and he taught him how to play a lot of Bach music. Now, we know about Bach, see how much we're learning. Um, in fact, I was gonna do this class before Bach, and I was like, we gotta, we have to talk about Bach in counterpoint, because we're gonna, um, some of Piazzolla's influence, a lot of it came from Bach, and him learning Bach on the accordion at a very young age. So he masters kind of this classical music on this tango-ish instrument. And um, what does he do? He goes to study with the most famous teacher in the 20th century that we've looked at. Who? Nadia Boulanger. And he studies composition with her. Now, at first, he, he, he had played so much tango music in, in Argentina and also Greenwich Village because they moved back and forth. Um, and he was kind of tired of it. And I think he wanted to go beyond what, what you know tango music could be. And so he, he tried to hide hide some of that when he started taking lessons with Boulanger and and he because he thought well maybe my my destiny lies in classical music and um Piazzolla played some of his classic classical compositions for her and it wasn't until he played this certain tango for her that she said wait that there's your voice that's your career 
and and go with that and because of that she saw his strength see that that was such such a brilliant way of her finding and we talked about um how she was really great at finding everybody's strength and sometimes even saying i there's nothing for me to teach you so just go your own way or yes i can work with you here you know i mean she really saw everybody's individual talent but he was able to combine his his musical passions of classical and tango music despite criticism from a lot of other tango players accordion bandonian players that were like no no okay you're going to try to make it serious okay fine we play real tango but he's trying to go and say yeah i'm going to use classical elements that boulanger taught me i'm going to use jazz i'm going to make it just my own and uh they call it nuevo tango nuevo tango you know new tango and that's what he's responsible for kind of creating with these elements of jazz and classical jazz harmonies and also classical elements and what do i mean by classical elements well one in particular is counterpoint and we looked at counterpoint with two two or more um, individual independent lines going on at the same time uh, and bach was the inventor of that and, and and he did this in this piece right here such fun music it's really delightful but if you but it's also when you're listening to it it's highly complex music i think he liked improvisation but all of these were his arrangements and he really did most of his work that he was most proud of with his quintet that he developed and so this is going on in the 60s up until he died <laughs> So with his new style of playing and his quintet, he did arrangements and he also wrote more than 45 film scores and released even more albums and became one of the most prolific musicians and composers of the 20th century in jazz and tango music. Um, uh, I think some of the coolest opening credits are in Terry Gilliam's film, Twelve Monkeys, um, where uh, he uses Piazzolla's uh, music. <laughs> We also see parallels to um, Hitchcock's Vertigo, uh, if you look at those opening title sequences, which is something we're going to be doing Monday, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So um, this tango music even works in a science fiction film. <laughs> So that's a brief little um, 
uh, history of t Nuevo Tango and Astro Piazzolla and a great melodic composer who um, Boulanger said, go with your gut, go with what you're good at and, and practice, you know. Uh, it, it's good once you know you're on the right path, um, then you can conquer that path or be the best you can be on that path. So he, he knew that he was great at tango music, but he wanted to, he knew that he could, he could uh, really transcend just regular tango, you know, um, cafe music into something that's, that was complex yet very melodic and harmonically pleasing in a, in a, in a sense to even, um, you know, common ears uh, and classical ears. Um, so, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you danced a little in your seat. That's Astor Piazzolla. And um, tomorrow I have another surprise for you. So, have a great rest of the day. Love you, miss you. I mean that. Love you and miss you. I do mean that. So, um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.